What is good guys, it is your boy, back for another video. Happy fucking New Year. If you're wondering where my end of the year top 10 video is, I'm not doing one, fuck them. I think they're boring. I've watched enough people's this year to just be fucking bored with it. I don't even want to do it. I'm still going to do like a highlights and collecting since my channel's, you know, more of a collecting channel anyway. You don't see me like posting reviews and shit. That's Shintai's job. Um, but real quick, best games that came out this year on a handheld... Uh, Stella Glow being number one. Uh, also, really strong entries by the new Corpse Party game, Dungeon Travelers 2. Um, what is the game I was thinking of? Corpse Party, Dungeon Travelers 2. Oh, uh, Criminal Girls, Innocent Sin. Best console games of the year for me, personally. I'm going to go with, I really, really enjoyed Undernight and Birth. Um, Until Dawn, a game that I borrowed from my homegirl. Um, shit. Well, Fighting Climax for both handheld and, um, console was amazing. But my number one console game of the year is definitely going to be Bloodborne. So Bloodborne and Stella Glow, you know, my games of the year. Um, this video, going to be doing a little spotlight, uh, on a developer, well, more of a publisher anyway for this video. Because I added some really cool games to my DS collection, and I have them on the shelf by developer because I'm that guy. Um, to quote, <laughs> to quote sporadic space bars. Apparently, I'm collecting logos. Sue me. Um, but I added a couple really, really awesome DS games to the collection, and I'm talking about Sega as a publisher. Guys, don't sleep on Sega. Awesome, awesome publisher, especially on the DS, um, three of the most, the most valuable games on the DS that are actually fun to play, that's the key here, um, expensive games that are fun to play are published by Sega, uh, so let me show you a couple of the not so interesting ones, well they're all interesting in some way, for Sonic Chronicles, I do not like Sonic, I am not a fan, don't really like platformers. Uh, good news for me, this is not a platformer. This is actually an RPG developed by Bioware. So it plays like your typical Bioware game, except it's in the Sonic universe. Unfortunately, I would say this game is for Sonic hardcore fans only. I couldn't really get into it, but I see the appeal. For me, this is more of um, just something that I find interesting. This is the only Sonic game in my collection due to its kind of just being unusual and uh, interesting. So, again, published by Sega, obviously, but very interesting title there. Here's one that I've uh, gushed over before, Thor on the DS, another really interesting release. This game with the same title and cover came out on every single console um, that was relevant at the time. The one on the DS is the only one developed by Way Forward, so it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up very, very good and gorgeous game. Story is terrible. Dialogue is cringeworthy, but the gameplay is fantastic. Definitely an underrated game, and it's really cheap. You can get this complete for a couple dollars. Um, highly recommended, especially if you like Way Forward. And now we're getting into kind of the uh, the cooler ones, in my opinion. This one I just picked up. This is one of the reasons I decided to make this video, to go ahead and make this video. Really excited to have this game, and that is uh, Mystery Dungeon, Shire and the Wanderer. I love this game on the Wii. It's one of my favorite Wii games, and this is a game I've wanted forever, but I haven't been able to find a complete copy, um, you know, in my local stores. You can get it on Amazon for under 20 bucks, I'm sure. Really happy to finally get this. It was $3.99 at GameStop. There is a GameStop near me that still puts out DS cases because they have enough room in the store to do so. So I'm really thankful for that. And whenever they get uh, cool games in, uh, one of the, I think it's the assistant manager, actually just gives me a call now, which is really cool of him. So he set this one aside for me. Really happy to pick that up. Uh, looking forward to playing this. Now for some that I've actually played, and when I talk about the most expensive games on the system that are actually fun, actually worth playing, because yeah, there's a lot of expensive games that are just fucking doo-doo, you know, butt cheeks. These ones are actually good. Um, first, Fantasy Star Zero, another Sega published game. Fantastic. I really had a blast with this game. 
played through it in about five nights. I mean, I really got addicted and sucked into this game. Even without the online components being active anymore, it was still a really good time. One of the better Fantasy Star games I've played in a while, though I haven't played a ton of them. I mean, I got into Fantasy Star on the Genesis with Fantasy Star 3, which is, you know, usually considered to be one of the worst ones. But never really got into, like, the ones on the GameCube and the Xbox and stuff. And I picked some up for the PSP, but didn't really get past the first couple hours of Part 1. Um, but I really got sucked into this really good game, and prices on this are climbing. Don't sleep on your Sega published games. Next is uh, one I'm so happy to get this. I got, I just got this. This is a double. I had the game loose that I got from GameStop for $4.99, and uh, when the guy put the Shiren game away from me, he rang a couple off. And when he said this game, I fucking almost had a heart attack. I was like, Dude, that's complete? And he's like, yeah, it's in great shape. And I was like, fucking put that one aside for me. That is Sands of Destruction, so I finally have a complete copy of this game. So uh, my loose copy I'm going to be giving to uh, my friend that has hooked me up uh, a lot in the past. So this is going to, well, the loose copy is going to him. I'm keeping the complete copy. He doesn't give a fuck about cases, so it works out great for both of us. Really good game. I believe it's based on an anime. I haven't watched the anime, but again, this is another game that I really got sucked into. It started off kind of rocky. I was like, I don't know about this, but the more I played it, the more I enjoyed it. Um, at first, it was kind of a slog, but once it got its hooks into me, um, it was fantastic. And the visuals in this game are really gorgeous. I mean, to an extent. Sometimes they look bad, but when they want to look good, they look really good. Like all the animated portions and the cutscenes and stuff look really nice. So another great game on the DS published by Sega, and this one is skyrocketing in value. So check your GameStops, $4.99. And lastly, the crown jewel of the Sega published DS games is Infinite Space. Developed by Platinum Games, a really odd title for Platinum Games, considering this is a RPG with some parts kind of feel like a strategy game more than an RPG. Well, it is a strategy RPG game with spaceship combat, I fucking love this game. I thought this game was fantastic. It took me two or three tries to really get into it because it is, it's got a steep learning curve, really steep. Like, we're talking fucking the North Face on this motherfucker. But once you get into the game, the story's good. The mechanics are really solid. The ship combat, I find, I found to be a lot of fun. And it just really got sucked into this grand science fiction space adventure that was just, it was cool. I haven't played a lot of games like this, really, really enjoyed it. So, guys, that's a quick look at what I think are some of the coolest games on the DS, all published by Sega. This is my whole Sega published library for the DS. There's a bunch of other ones out there. Um, if you know of any really interesting ones, please let me know. I think I have most of the ones that I'm interested in, but you know, when a lot of people talk about publishers that they think are, um, you know, good to collect for, it's oftentimes it's NIS and Atlas, um, you know, Capcom, things of that nature, but the Sega games on the DS are not only some of the most collectible, but definitely, definitely some of the most enjoyable. That's it for me, guys. Quick video. Crack out.